so uh, unfortunately, I'll say to him, if you would make it to give the stuff today, but he will be replaced by David Jacobson, he will show us the same things. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Right. All right. Thanks very much. Um, yeah. Thanks to the organizers for allowing me to step in. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, Alexi fell ill this morning. Uh, so, yeah, just a disclaimer these are his slides. So, for, for whatever it's worth. Um, so yeah, the, the, the talk is, is really about symmetries and confinement. Uh, and this is uh, related to a, a recent paper done with Alexei Chairman and Maria Nuzhul, who's in the audience. So it's about symmetries and confinement. And I think Esther and Pierre Yang Mills theory is you know, the quintessential example where there is this concrete connection, which is very well understood. Um, so of course, we all believe that Pierre Yang Mills theory confines uh, fundamental test quarks. And this is often stated as selection rules for certain line operators. So if we have some uh, circle in space time, we can compute the, the Polyakov loop expectation value, and that will vanish in any finite volume. And there's a similar selection rule uh, for contractible Wilson loops that says that in the infinite area limit, uh, these Wilson loop expectation values should vanish in any scheme. Okay, more familiarly, we just have an area law for the Wilson loop. Uh, and respectively, these are interpreted as saying that the free energy of an isolated quark is infinite or that there's a linear uh, asymptotic quark antiquark potential. Is there a way to remove the. Would you with the mouse? There's yeah. a mouse on the. Oh, oh, oh. Would you... uh, I see. Yes. Uh... No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Um, right. And and there's no coincidence that there is a ZN one form symmetry in Pierre Mills theory. Uh, you know, the major insight of this generalized global symmetries program is that symmetries should be thought of in terms of topological operators. And in the case of one-form symmetry, these are co-dimension two operators. Uh, in the case of the ZN one-form symmetry, we, we call them U, U sub K. This K uh, is associated with a group element of Z mod N. And these operators have a ZN fusion rule. So we can sort of fuse two of them together. The fusion rule is a ZN fusion rule. And the action on Wilson loops uh, is by multiplication by ZN phases, which depends on the, the linking number of the symmetry generator and the Wilson loop. Uh, the phase that one gets is determined by the representation of uh, the Wilson loop, namely, uh, more, more specifically, its analogy. OK, uh, so this is just a cartoon of uh, this linking relation in three space-time dimensions where these operators are themselves de defined on closed curves. And this is sort of indicating that the, the linking relation is, in some sense, a local computation. So you can shrink the symmetry generator somewhere on the Wilson loop, and you pick up the, the correct phase, which measures the analogy. Okay. Um, so of course, we, we identify Wilson loops as the order parameters for the symmetry. Uh, and so these selection rules are then viewed as consequences of the ZN one-form symmetry. Um, and then we can talk about a confining phase of a gauge theory as a phase where the one-form symmetry is not spontaneously broken. Um, but now we add fundamental quarks to the theory. And for the rest of the talk, I'll mostly be interested in large NQCD and the Tuft large N limit. So we just have an order one number of fundamental quarks. Uh, and the standard lore is that quark loops are suppressed at large N. Okay, and I think we all agree that large NQCD should be understood as a confining theory. Polyakov loops uh, have vanishing expectation values at large n when properly normalized. And similarly, if we uh, compute a large Wilson loop expectation value, provided we take the large n limit before taking the area of the loop to infinity, uh, we get area law. Okay, so confinement is well defined in large NQCD, uh, but given uh, our experience with Yang Mills, where we have a symmetry explanation for those selection rules, uh, one might wonder the extent to which there might be emergent one form symmetries in large NQCD, uh, which would explain why, for example, Wilson loops have area law. Okay. Uh, so that's a natural guess, but 
basically the, the purpose of this talk and the purpose of our paper is to give arguments uh, why this scenario is not realized. Okay. Uh, so this turns out uh, to not be correct. And I'll give some evidence, some, some general arguments uh, for obstructions to one-form symmetries in large NQCD. And then I'll talk about the, the simplest possible example, namely uh, 2D QCD with just scalar fundamental matter on the lattice. So it'll be very concrete. Okay. So there are two, two main obstructions to having this scenario. One is the existence of open Wilson lines in large N, uh, large NQCD. And the other is uh, a failure of quark loop suppression. Uh, this quark loop suppression fails precisely for the operators which you would have thought would generate the symmetry. Um, okay, so, so I'll explain sort of in some generality, and then again, we'll look at these two issues, uh, mostly the second one uh, in an explicit example. But again, the upshot is that uh, according to you know, this modern definition of symmetry, there is no one-form symmetry in large NQCD. Um, so I want to yeah start with the, the endability obstruction. So this phrase endability in this general argument uh, goes back to this paper by Tom Redelius and Xu Heng Xiao. And essentially it states that uh, if you think you have a one-form symmetry, uh, you should look uh, for obstructions based on whether those the, 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 the lines which are charged on the one-form symmetry can be endable. Okay. And large NQCD certainly has endable Wilson lines. So we just take a Q bar and a Q separated by some distance and attach a Wilson line between them. Okay. And those operators, those open Wilson lines have order one expectation values of large n. So to see why these open lines pose a problem for the existence of these topological operators, uh, we assume uh, for the sake of contradiction that such operators exist. Um, so let's assume that they are topological up to one over n corrections. Then what we can do is we can take this operator. So here I'm just again uh, sketching what would happen in three dimensions. You can take this would-be topological operator, sort of surround this open Wilson line and shrink it somewhere on the line, and we'll pick up the ZN phase. Or we can move the operator off the Wilson line and shrink it very far away, in which case we don't get a phase. And for this to be a consistent sequence of steps, uh, this expectation value of this open line better vanish. Um, uh, we could repeat this argument in the presence of other operator insertions. And so really there's a much stronger constraint that the open Wilson line uh, would have to basically act like the zero operator. Can you modify the operator with a surface operator that acts on the quarks? You could. Uh, you could fill in this operator with some bulk which acts uh, on the quarks and maybe implements the bearing on number symmetry. Uh, but then you would be sensitive to counter terms uh, at the intersection point between this open line and the bulk of that operator. So I, I'm happy to talk about that more maybe afterwards, but um, for now, I just want to consider the situation where you just have these co-dimension two uh, operators. Okay, so, so clearly we have non-trivial open Wilson lines. And so in general, these topological <coughs> operators should not exist in, in large NQCD. Um, now, part of this argument uh, lies on the assumption that, you know, we can shrink this operator somewhere on the Wilson line and the action that we obtain is sort of somehow local. Um, so, you know, this, this operator doesn't know whether the, the, the Wilson line is open or closed. Uh, and the upshot is basically, if this operator fails to be topological in correlation functions with open lines, then it should be non-topological in general. Okay, um, so the second, uh, sort of issue is is quark loop suppression. So maybe you don't believe the, the open Wilson line argument. Uh, after all, quark loops should be one over n suppressed in large NQCD. So if we have these, these operators which exist in Purying Mills, they're gluonic operators, we would expect that all of their correlation functions agree with the Yang Mills values up to one over n corrections. Um, but we'll see that actually quark loops aren't suppressed precisely for these operators. Um, and uh, just to sort of set the stage, we should sort of ask ourselves, what are the interesting operators, both these symmetry generators, but also the Wilson loops, which, which are the interesting set of operators at large n? So even in, in Curie Mills theory, uh, we claim that the, the interesting set of symmetry operators are the ones where K scales like N. 
So I don't, I don't mean literally k equal to n, I mean more like k, like n over two, let's say. So very far from the identity. Um, so why are these interesting? The reason is that you want these, these operators to have a non-trivial action on say fundamental Wilson loops or Wilson loops with order one anality. Um, so we could have a UK operator with K of order one that has some non-trivial action on a Wilson loop with a very large anality, but those Wilson loops are sort of not interesting at large n because we expect that their expectation values vanish for any, any size loop. Okay, uh, so yeah. So correspondingly, if we act with this U1 operator on say a fundamental Wilson loop, it acts by multipl multiplication by a phase, which basically vanishes in the large n limit. So in order to get something interesting, we have to take K of order N. So in order to see whether quark loops are suppressed for these operators, we can just look first at their expectation values. So if there were an exaxia and one form symmetry, uh, consistency with the fusion rules of these operators implies that the expectation values uh, are roots of unity and roots of unity in pure Yang mills on R to the D, or if this co-dimension two manifold is contractible, uh, the expectation values are just equal to one. So we can suppose that in large NQCD, these UK operators are topological and uh, behave like ZN symmetry generators up to one of our incorrections and see how far we can get. Okay, so we assume that the expectation values are just one plus one of our incorrections, and that factorization holds up to one of our incorrections. Uh, and I'm just, for simplicity, considering the case of QDQCD, where these operators are just local operators, but this argument uh, can be extended to higher dimensions. Right. So, so these are the assumptions, for example, for the, the, the generators of the symmetry. Uh, so if we had, uh, a ZN symmetry, then we could take a general UK operator and sort of resolve it into K copies of nearby U1 operators uh, using the fusion rule. And then assuming factorization, uh, the expectation value should just be K times the, the, the single generator expectation value. Now, if we try to do this in this situation, we'll have corrections to factorization first from each pair. So we resolve our UK operator into a collection of K U1 operators, but there are K squared pairs. Each pair is sort of correlated with one over N. And so as a result, corrections to factorization should scale like K squared over N roughly. Okay. So from this argument, we can see that even if the, 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 the U1 operators, which generate the symmetry, have the expected properties up to one over n corrections, as soon as k is order root n, this will break down. Um, and as a result for k of order n, or, or sorry, k of order root n or of order n, uh, the correlation functions will not be consistent with the ZN symmetry. Um, and indeed that's what we'll see uh, in explicit calculations. Okay, so that brings me to uh, the specific example, which we really wanted to see how these general arguments uh, worked out, which is uh, 2DQCD with scalar fundamental matter, just a single flavor. Um, so we work on the lattice and we work in a hopping expansion. Um, so this allows one to just take into account the corrections due to dynamical fundamental matter very explicitly. Um, and we can see that the would-be generators of the CN symmetry are not topological. Okay. And even though we're in two dimensions, uh, 2DQCD is a combining theory. So the dynamics is, is rich enough in the simple example that it sort of captures the main essence of, of these arguments. Okay. So one nice thing about uh, QCD in two dimensions is that we can use the heat kernel action. And that in pure Yang mills, that would allow us to just compute continuum answers on the coarsest possible lattices. Uh, so this heat kernel action is sub, subdivision invariant in two dimensions. Um, so we use that for the pure gauge portion of the action and then just a standard hopping term with hopping parameter kappa. So this hopping expansion is really an expansion in one over the mass in lattice units. 
So it's very far from the continuum limit, but nevertheless, it gives us sort of nice insights into this general structure. And all of the selection rules that we expect in the continuum limit are all also here in the hopping expansion. Um, so if there was a symmetry at play in the continuum limit, we would certainly expect it also to be on the lattice. Um, so given some expectation value that we'd like to compute of a pure glue observable in 2D QCD in the hopping expansion, this gets expressed as uh, the pure gang mills result plus, and this is sort of schematic, but plus uh, an insertion of all possible hopping loops of various shapes and sizes uh, weighed by the hopping parameter to the length of those loops. Um, and so for us, the, the interesting operators, which we'll be you know, really computing are Wilson loop expectation values and expectation values and correlators of these, this, the, of the generators of the, the one form symmetry in 2D mills which again are gluonic operators. Okay, so let's start with the, the Wilson loop, uh, just to remind ourselves sort of how quark loop suppression uh, is seen in this formalism. So at zeroth order, uh, we just get the pure gang mills result, which is the string tension is the tuft coupling divided by two. Uh, and then we can work to leading order in the hopping expansion. So leading order means we bring down just a small, uh, a single plaquette sized hopping loop which we sum over uh, all of its positions on the lattice, which we give area A, uh, right? And, and you know, roughly this plaquette can either be on top of the Wilson loop or somewhere outside. And we can sort of interpret this as saying that there's like a one over N uh, correction, which sort of pokes a hole in the world sheet. Um, so this is just to leading order. And then one could imagine sort of resumming these single plaquette uh, hopping loops to exponentiate this result. And this would be a one over n correction then to the Curie Mills string tension. Um, so this displays the one over n suppression of quark loops. And if we work to even higher orders, eventually we'll get to the perimeter law contribution where we have a hopping loop, which just lays right on top of the Wilson loop, loop we put down. And again, that will be one over n suppressed. So from this, we conclude, uh, based on, in accordance with our intuition that, you know, if you take the n equals to infinity limit before taking the size of this Wilson loop to infinity, uh, you just pick up the area law term. Okay. So again, this is sort of containing all of the, the, the physics we expect from uh, 40 QCD in the continuum. And one can also, you know, work out Polyakov loop expectation values and verify that they vanish in the large n limit. Okay. So what about the one form symmetry generators? These are of the more interesting operators. Um, so first of all, we need to decide on a definition of, of these operators or a way of implementing them. So there are several equivalent choices. Um, we could sort of define it as a disorder operator, a group of operator, where we just remove a plaquette and constrain uh, the holonomy to be in a certain conjugacy class. In this case, we'd want them to just be a, a the holonomy to, be, to lie in the center. Uh, but a more convenient approach on the lattice is to use what's known as a thin center vortex. Um, so that just takes your pure Yang mills pure gauge part of the action and applies a small twist where you multiply uh, the single plaquette variable by a Zn phase. And again, we're in two dimensions, so these operators are local. They're defined on the dual lattice, uh, and so they modify a single plaquette on the lattice. So in computing the expectation value, we have uh, the numerator and the denominator. The numerator, we just have the sum over hopping loops. Um, the, the leading order, we have, again, a single plaquette, which can either be on top of or away from uh, the location of this defect. And in the denominator, we just have the, the usual partition function expanded to the same order, where we have the single plaquette uh, on all sides of the lattice whose area is equal to A. And putting things together, the result is that, uh, well, th this is the result up to uh, quadratic order, up to a second order in these single plaquettes. So the leading order term is coming from a single plaquette. This kappa to the eight term is coming from summing over two plaquettes at various 
positions. And just from this structure, you can see that this is sort of trying to build up an exponential. And indeed, that's what one generally expects with these sorts of cluster expansions. Um, so if we exponentiate this result, we find that the expectation value is an exponential of something which goes like minus n times some order one uh, function of k over n. Okay, so again, this expectation value of this uk operator goes like e to the minus k squared over n if we expand in k over n. Uh, and if k is of order n, this is going to zero non-perturbatively in one over n. Okay, so we, we apply the hopping expansion, we exponentiate, and then take the large n limit, and the expectation values of these operators are going to zero. Okay, and zero is an order one away from one, which is the pure, val uh, pure, pure gauge theory expectation value. Um, so in this case, quark loops are really dramatically changing uh, the correlation functions of these operators. Sorry, question? Yes. When exactly do you take k to be of order n? What stage in the computation? After doing the hop after resumming the hopping expansion. But the rule I thought is you first take n to infinity and then the size to infinity. Uh, so between these two, between these two orders, where is k going to infinity? So we always want to take the large n limit before, say, the size of a Wilson loop. But in the case of these local topological operators, we just have the single plaquette contributions. We resum those and then take the large element. K going to infinity. K. K going to infinity. Is it before you took n to infinity or after? Well, I can I I, I, it, I I can consider different limits. So in particular, I can take a double scaling limit where k then the the k here is scaling, let's say like n over two. Well, it's a general question. Whenever the operator depends on n. Is an ambiguity in what order you take. It's not an ambiguity, That's right. it's a different computation. Yeah. So which, which of them did, did you take? That? So, sorry, when you say K, do you mean kappa, the hopping parameter? No, K. The K, 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 OK, K. yeah. K enables which operator you study. Yeah, that's and right. You want to take N to infinity when K also goes to infinity. That's right. OK, so therefore, it makes sense to ask at what, in which order do you take? So you take the area to infinity, n to infinity, and k to infinity. In which order? Hmm. So looking at this, you're uh, trying to get u one, right? You're trying to get u one from z n. Uh, no, no, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't really know what that means because there's no there's no z n to to begin with. But uh, <laughs> Nati, are you asking about the area of space time or, or what? Just the, the value k here. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm struggling a little bit because. Yeah. It, my question is exactly the same as his. Because the when you say n goes to infinity, you can ask, what do you mean? What happens to z n that n goes to infinity? And as a group, there are many different answers to this question, right? Depending on how you take the limit. And that's, among other things, how you take k to infinity. And I don't see here the answer to that question. Hmm. So for example, you can say that the limit of Zn as n goes to infinity is u1. You can also say that the limit of Zn as n goes to infinity is z. There sure. are many other ways of taking the limit, you'll get different answers. And this is correlated with being very clear which representations you keep and related to that with what limit you take with with k, which limit of k you take? Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, so I'm struggling a little bit to to pinpoint exactly where we could get different answers depending on what we do with k. Uh, and just in this, in, that if you take k to infinity together with n with a fixed ratio, then this right. goes to zero, right? That's, so that's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The double scaling. But even less than, but you, you have plus, 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 then you have a guess, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is, this is based on this sort of expectation based on clustering arguments that this exponentiates. I mean, already at this stage, if you, you know, 
take the large n limit here, it doesn't look smooth. And so one has to do resummation in order to say anything really about what happened. So in, in some sense, already at this stage, we can say quark loops are not suppressed for this observable. And maybe that's all we can say. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And if again, if we take K to scale like root N, which is what the general argument said, that was sort of the bound where things should break down. Uh, this UK operator does have a smooth large n limit, but it's just some non-universal number between zero and one. Okay, but again, this is not consistent with these operators generating a Z-N symmetry. So just to start to summarize uh, about the fate of this this one-form symmetry, uh, we gave arguments both general arguments, but also some concrete uh, calculations and in, in a specific example. Uh, that indicate that large NQCD does not have uh, a ZM one form symmetry in the sense that the uh, required topological operators uh, don't exist. There are certain obstructions. Um, on the one hand, we have the, the non trivial open Wilson lines, which uh, seem to preclude the existence of exactly topological co dimension two operators. Uh, and secondly, we give arguments that quark, quark loops are not suppressed precisely for the operators uh, which one would identify as the would-be symmetry generators. Okay. And just uh, as a sort of outlook, I mean, some of these results might be surprising or puzzling. Uh, after all, the, the Wilson loops and Polyakov loops themselves you know, behave very similarly in large NQCD as they do in Yang Mills. Uh, but at the same time, we believe that they're not explained by uh, ZN one-form symmetry. Sorry, we just do it know that they behave the same way for large k for the large k well I, by large k do you mean sorry the wilson loop and polyakov loop correlation functions What's in large as well i'm not sure what k refers to in the case of uh, the, the, the wilson loop of the wilson oh the analogy so, yeah that's right yeah so that's certainly true for large analogy large numbers of boxes yeah we really don't know what happens but uh, I think it's it's interesting just to look at the subset of of representations, say whose Casimirs don't scale uh, faster than n. Yeah. So absent, uh, yeah. So there are sort of two options. One is that you know there is some symmetry principle that explains these selection rules, but it just goes beyond. Uh, you know, the, the current state of generalized global symmetry. So maybe there's some further generalization which would explain these selection rules. Um, but if not, then we would have to sort of sit with these selection rules without symmetries. Um, and the, that certainly seems strange, but maybe uh, that's what happens. And yeah, I think it would be interesting to think of examples where on the one hand you have you know, selection rules, but there are obstructions to having exact symmetries uh, apart from large NQCD, and apart from large engaged theories in general. So actually our, our initial motivation for looking for these emergent symmetries was to see whether large and pure Yang-Mills theory in three and four dimensions uh, has an emergent non-invertible symmetry, which is exact in two dimensions. Um, but this idea sort of has the same obstructions that we found in the case, the hopefully sim simpler case of uh, just the ZM one form symmetry. Um, yeah, so just to finally wrap up, uh, I hope that maybe this uh, stimulates some uh, some work on this connection between symmetry and confinement. So thanks very much. I mean, so, so could you perhaps say that there is a sector of large N QCD which which is just the large N Wells operator, so that it doesn't include those open Wilson lines, and then in that sector there is this symmetry? Yeah. No. So um, the reason is that the the topological operators are are gluonic operators, and so if that scenario were to be realized, they would be perfectly topological, and all correlation functions would just close Wilson loops. But that on its own is, doesn't seem to be the case.
So it's, yeah, it's not just the existence of the open Wilson line or correlation functions only with open Wilson lines where they don't behave topologically. It's sort of more general. Thank you again.